Today's lesson is called first differences. And yes, there are second differences and third differences, but in grade nine, we're just gonna talk about first differences. From our last lesson, we learned two ways that you can determine whether or not a relation is linear. Linear is an important word. Linear means that when you graph it, it's going to be straight. So the two things we talk about is if we had a graph or if we had an equation. So if you just have the graph of a relation, how can you tell if it's linear? That's the easy one because you have a straight line. So it's linear because it looks straight. It's a straight line. What if you don't have any gra a graph, but you just have the equation? How do you find out if it's linear? Do you remember the, the characteristics for that? So think of an equation like y equals 2x plus 1. Well, there's an invisible exponent of 1 on the x, or there's no x. That's how you can tell by looking at the equation. But we also know how to create a table of values. And we're going to see there's a third way to determine whether or not a re relation is linear. We're going to use the table of values that we learned in our last lesson to create something called a difference table. And we're looking for the first differences. As I said, there's second and third differences. But in our difference table, we're only going to find first differences. So if the relation doesn't satisfy these criteria, meaning the graph isn't straight, the equation doesn't have an exponent of, of one, and we don't have first differences, then it's nonlinear. So let's talk about those first differences. Okay, this is nonlinear. This is a graph that is not a straight line. We just have coordinates here. So we, we, we're given coordinates, so we have to find out if it's linear or not. We're gonna create a difference table so here are the steps to creating a difference table. Step one is to draw a chart. So the chart is a little different. It's a little bit like the table of values chart, but it's got an extra column on it here. So instead of the X values and the Y values, only we have this new column. This is a Greek letter delta, this triangle, and it means change. So we're looking for delta Y. We're looking we're going to look and see how the y's change, the change in the y's. And those are called the first or finite differences. Step two is to write the x values in the chart in order. So look at all my x's, a negative 4, an 8, a 2, a 5, negative 1. Those aren't in order. In order means you start with the lowest number, so like the, the negative, I guess the smallest negative. Um, that's going to go first. So look at all the x values we have here. Which number is the smallest? It's the negative 4, so that's my smallest one. And I'm putting them all in order. So what's the next smallest x value? Negative 1. Then we have a negative 2. Negative 2. Or that's a positive 2, not a negative 2. Um, so positive 2 is, is the next one. And what's after the positive 2? 5. And the last one is our biggest x value, which is an 8. That's step 1. Easy or step two, sorry. Step three, uh, step three, we're not doing anything. We're just checking to make sure that the x values increase at even intervals. So how many units are between negative four and one? It's increasing by three, it's increasing by three, increasing by three, good. So that's important, they all have to be increasing evenly. Step four, we match the corresponding y values. So we're gonna put the y values in here now. So negative four, its corresponding y value is 26. The negative one is next its value was an 11. So we just put the values in the chart from the coordinates, we just match them up. That's an easy step two. Step four is also easy. Um, now step five is our new one. We're gonna find the differences in the y's. There shouldn't be an apostrophe there, but I put it in because um, if I write ys, I think it looks confusing. Subtract in the same direction each time. So here's our new step. Find the differences in the y's. What that means is, so we're going to look at our first pair here, our first coordinate, our first two coordinates, those two. And I'm just going to look at the y values. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the y values in order, take the bottom one between of my pair, which is an 11. So first thing I write down is an 11. And then I'm going to subtract from that the one above it. 26. That's why it's really important that you that you put these in order. They have to be in order. So 11 minus 26 is negative 15. 
So that is called a first difference. It's the change in the y. I looked at how my y changes. So to get from a 26 to an 11, I had to subtract 15. I'm looking at the changes in the y's, and I want to look at how all of the y's change. Let's do another pair here. So now, next, I'm going to take this pair. So I have to do each pair in order. So I'll take the bottom one, that's a negative 4, and I'm going to subtract the one above it. That's the 11. Negative 4 minus 11 is also negative 15. So these numbers look like they're going up with the same amount. So to get from an 11 to a negative 4, I have to subtract 15. Now I'm going to do my next pair. That's going to be a negative, well, let me change to blue here. It's going to be a negative 19, and then subtract the one above it. That subtract a negative 4. Now you're going to lose marks. I'm going to take away a 4 mark if you don't do it in the right order, if you don't subtract in the right order, if you go the wrong way. So this is, let me put an extra step in here these two negatives, so I've got really negative 19 plus 4 is what I have there, which is negative 15. One more pair, my last set of coordinates is first I have a negative 34, then I'm going to subtract the one above it, that's a negative 19, I'm putting the brackets on because you're not supposed to have two negatives sitting beside each other, so that's really negative 34 plus 19, and what a surprise, that's negative 15. So those are our first differences. Our first differences are, for each one, they're negative 15. So now we can look at part B. B says, does the data represent a linear or nonlinear relation? Linear or nonlinear. So how do you know? If all of these numbers are the same, that means it's linear because the y values are going up equally. So the x values we know are going up equally these ones are going up by 3. It doesn't matter what they're going up by, but they're all evenly spaced out. These are also evenly spaced out. So if everything's evenly spaced out, you're going to have a line. The data is linear, a linear relation, because the first differences are constant. They're constant is the word we use in math instead of saying the same. So these are constant, negative 15. Again, your parents are constantly telling you to clean your room. It's the same thing every time. So the first differences are constant, that means it's linear. So now that means if I'm just given coordinates without having to graph it, I can quickly, I mean I did this slowly, but I can kind of quickly see if it's linear or not just by putting them in order and then seeing are they evenly spaced out or what are the, are the first differences. This number itself, the negative 15, is important. It's important that it's negative and that it's 15, but you don't need to worry about that right now at all. You just need to find if the um, value is the same. But it is important that you subtract in the right order because later when we do need to kind of dissect this actual number, it's important you get this number right. So you have to make sure you're doing your first differences the right way. So what do we know? We know that a table of values like we just had, it shows it's linear. If the x values increase equally, which ours did, we made sure we checked them, they spread out evenly, they, no uneven jumps between the numbers, and the difference between two consecutive y values, so when we subtracted the y values, the difference between them was always the same, i.e., which means in other words, the change in y is constant. So everything was going up evenly on these coordinates. They increased evenly, so we know, or decreased evenly, so we know that it's linear. So we're not done the question yet. We're going to sketch the graph. So here's a grid. Um, I have to decide where to put my x-axis and my y-axis. Now, when you're on your own graph paper, you don't really have to worry too much about it, but I have a, a, a very limited grid here. So I'm going to look at my lowest x number. Remember, that was a negative 4. That's my lowest x number, and my highest x number was the 8. So that means for my x-axis there, I want to put the y-axis maybe not quite in the middle. I want to have a little bit more room on the right because of the 8. So I'm going to put my y-axis right there. So that gives me a little more space. So let me label this x and y. So for my x values, I need to be able to fit a negative 4 on over here and an 8 on here. So that'll be no problem. I've got lots of grid lines and I want to use the grid space I have here. So I'm going to actually count by 0.5s, but I'm going to label 
every second one so that um, I spread it out a little bit and I use more space on the grid. It's a little easier to graph if you have more space. When I'm doing my negative values for x, I have to use the same spacing. I can't change the scale and start counting by something different. So I hope I get negative 4 on here, and yes, I do. So that's good. Now looking back up to my coordinates, I have to label my my um, y-axis now. I've got a lot bigger numbers here. This is my lowest y value, and this is my highest here. So I've got to get a negative 34 on the bottom, four, sorry, and I've got to get a 26 up here on the top. Counting, I'm certainly not going to count by 0.5s. Um, what if I counted by twos? Let's see. If I counted by twos, this would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. No. Okay, that's not going to work. So we just we pick even numbers that we can count by pretty easily. So I'm going to count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. Yeah, no problem there. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Yeah, good. So I'm going to count by fives here. But I'm not going to label every one because it's crowded. So I'm going to... The first is 5, but I'm only going to put there's 10. So I'm not counting by 10s, I'm counting by 5s. So this speeds up my grid work a little bit here. Now on the negatives, remember I have to count by the same thing, so I can't all of a sudden start counting by um, negative, I don't know, 15s or something, negative 30. I can't do that. I have to use, have to use the same scale I used before. So let's count by tens, but these are negatives. Negative 30, negative 40. Okay, now I'm going to erase this red stuff I drew on here. So my next step is to put the points on. So I'll use black for that. So the first point I'm going to put on is negative 4, 26. So remember how to do that. I start at the origin. Start at the origin. I go negative 4 to the left. This is your in the ho uh, walking in the lobby or whatever. You're going in the hotel front doors are here. And I walk to the elevator, negative 4. Then I take the elevator up to 26 and I put a dot there. So 26 is, it's kind of a guess because I'm not right on the grid line. It's just above my 25. Oops, I want black. So I'm going to put a point right about there. So it's probably not exactly 26, but it's good enough. My next point is 8, negative 34. So again, for 8, negative 34, what we're doing is we're starting at the origin. We're going 8, positive 8, which means 8 to the right. And then 34 down. And then we'll put our point about here. So 8, negative 34 is about there. The next point is 2, negative 4. So from the origin, I'm going to the right 2 and down 4, so it's actually kind of right on the number 2 that I wrote there, I'm putting a dot, 2, negative 4, 5, negative 19, to the right 5, down 19, about here, and negative 1 and 11 is there. So when I look at these, my dots should be in a straight, oops, negative 1, 11, whoop, Sorry, hopefully you guys are shouting at your screen. That's not right, you did positive one. And you know how I recognize that right away? Because, let me put it back, I'll show you. So this is wrong, I'll put an X there, but that's kind of where I had it. Because what I was about to say is, you know you've got your coordinates right when you look at them and they look like they're all gonna form a straight line. And I thought, well, these are all these are all gonna form a straight line, but what, what's wrong here? So I knew right away, oh, I put it in the wrong spot because it, it wasn't lining up. If I put my ruler down here, this one would be left out. So that's how I knew, and that's a great illustration for how you guys can check if it's right. So negative 111 is here. Now they're all lining up. So I'm gonna get my ruler and I'm gonna to try to draw a straight line, but my tablet likes my ruler and it thinks it's a pen and it gives me a mess all over the place. So I'm gonna press pause to do this. Um, but your ruler, when you draw your line, remember to extend it beyond your dot. It doesn't just stop there. It goes further and you put an arrow on the end. Okay, that's the best I can do with my ruler. Yours should not have little bumps in it. It should be straight. There's arrows on either side. And 
in our last lesson, we labeled the line with the um, equation, but we don't have an equation, so we don't have anything to label it with, and we don't have to label all the coordinates. So that is the uh, that is the linear graph that matches the linear coordinates that we learned because we did a table of values, and then we added on a difference column, first differences, and they were all in negative 15. So. See, the negative 15 doesn't have anything to do with this right now. You'll learn more about that later. But the fact that those numbers were all, all negative 15, they were constant, also told us that it is linear. So definitely this one is linear. So we're going to talk about something a little different right now. Independent versus dependent variables. In a relationship, this means a relationship between x and y, the variable that depends on the other variable is the dependent variable. This is the y-axis case. Okay, so let me give you an example here. Let's say I want to talk about how long it takes you to walk to school, no matter where you live, how long it takes you to walk to school. So how long it, um, how long it takes you to walk to school would depend on how far away you are from school, right? So one thing depends on the other. So that's what dependent versus independent means what depends on the other. So the variable that does not depend on the other is the independent variable. Right? That makes sense. It's independent. It doesn't depend on the other one. This will be equivalent to the x-axis. Anytime you have a question with time, put it on the x-axis. Um, you know, as time passes, like you throw a ball in the air and it takes three seconds to hit the ground. The time it takes to hit the ground, that's your x-axis. The height of the ball then would be your y-axis. So here's an example of a fundraising car wash scenario. So dependent variable, the amount of money raised depends, so this is the revenue, this is the money, it depends on how many cars you wash. So you can't know how much money you're gonna raise in your car wash until you know how many cars you have, that's independent. So the cars, the cars don't depend on how much money you've raised, it's the other way around. So this is dependent always goes here. So that's dependent versus independent. So in our next in our next example, we're going to put all this stuff together that we've done so far in unit three. Not everything, a lot of it though. Example two, a man is driving from Ajax to Kingston. The table shows the distance traveled at different times along the trip. So in minutes, so at 60 minutes, he had gone 110 kilometers. So we're going to bring a lot of this stuff together here that we've been talking about. Um, the first thing is, is this linear or nonlinear? Use math to prove your answer. That means I can't graph it to prove my answer. I have to use math. So is it linear or nonlinear? So these are basically coordinates already in a chart for us. So I want to subtract. I want to make sure the x's are going up evenly and the y's are going up evenly. But uh, wait a second, which one is my x and which one is my y? Time and distance. Remember what I told you in the previous example? Anytime time is one of your options, that's going to be your x. Time is always independent. So as time went on, right, he's driving, zero minutes have passed, 30 minutes have passed, 60 minutes have passed. He can't change how much time has passed. He can change how far he's traveled, but he cannot change this. This is independent. Time keeps ticking no matter how far he travels. So the distance is depending on the time. So I'm going to put an x and a y here on the left. Time is my x and distance is my y. So remember, time is always x. Another little tip, your textbook seems to help you out quite a bit. Whenever it has a call, whenever it has a chart like this, almost always it's the x is on top and the y is on bottom. Um, they don't even make you think about it, which is unfortunate. They just often give it to you already set up, usually. That's the way it is. Okay, so we've got our x's and our y's. Are the x's going up in order? Are they going up evenly? Remember our steps from before. That's 30, that's 30, that's 30, that's 30. Perfect, the x's are going up evenly. So now we want to see if our y's are going up evenly. We're going to do some quick subtraction for that. We take, so here's our first, first coordinate, second coordinate. We take the second one, this is called, our, so this is a y value, this is my second y. This is my first y y2, y1, I'm labeling those. So I have to take my second one, I'll put it up here, I'm going to take my y2 and I subtract my y1, it always has to be in that order. 
So when I'm drawing my little, this is my delta y chart here. This is my change in y, and I'm adding another column on. So I'll have another column down here. So I'm taking my y2, that's my 55, my y2, and I'm subtracting the y1 like this. So let me just put the actual numbers in there instead of y2 and y1, instead of my second y and my first y. So I'm taking 55 and I'm subtracting the one before it, which is zero. That's easy. That's 55. Next pair. So my next pair, so I'm going to use this one again and this one. These are my next pair. So this is this 55 is now out of the out of this these two pairs here. This is now my first y and this is now my second y. So I'm using my little formula here, y2 minus y1 because I want to remember to put it in the right order. And you take the second y, that's 110. 110. And from that I'm going to subtract 55. What is 110 subtract 55? It's 55. Okay, we're getting the hang of this now, I think. My second pair are these two right here, or my next pair, sorry. I take the second one, which is a 165. I subtract from it the one before it, which is 110, which is again 55. This is looking promising. My last pair, see if we can do this without me circling anything. Let's erase this stuff here. My last pair is going to be my second y is 220. I subtract the one before it, 165. That gives me 55. Big surprise. So the question says, is your relationship linear or non-linear? Use math to prove your answer. So it is linear. It is linear because the first differences are constant. So the first difference is that's your delta y, that's your, remember delta means change, that's the change in the y's. So the ways the y, the, the way the y's change here is equal. They all change by 55 units. Now the number 55, remember that's not terribly important right now. What is important is that they're all the same. So we know it's linear. So that was part A, is it linear or non-linear? And this is our last example, by the way. Part B says graph the data, select a good scale. Okay, look at all these numbers here. Let me erase this mess I have in here. Look at all these numbers. They're all positive. All the numbers are positive. So I don't, when I think of my x and y axis here, if I, if I drew it like this, that wouldn't make much sense to have my x here and to have my y here because all my numbers are positive, which means they're all going to be in quadrant one. I don't need quadrants two, three, or four at all. I only need quadrant one. So I may as well set up my axes so that I'm only using quadrant one, so I'm maximizing the space I have here. So when you do a quiz or a test, you're given a little grid piece like this, and you have to use it properly. So my x and y axes are going to go right there. So this is x and this is y. I don't need any negative values and with word problems that's very common. Most of the time most of our word problems deal with positive values. Negative sometimes when you go into debt maybe that would be a negative number or if you um, you know temperatures decreasing something like that usually our numbers are negative. So now I need a good scale. What scale would I like to use? Let's look at all of our x numbers here. The lowest one is a zero. The highest one is 120. Okay, how am I going to fit 120 on there? So could I count by fives? No. So I'm going to count by tens, but I'm not going to label them all because it's crowded. So I'm going to label every second one, but I am counting by tens. So there's all my, even though I stopped at 120, that's the highest time value, I still used up the grid that I had and just stopped there. Uh, because it's a word problem, this is time, so I labeled that on there. So my x-axis is time. Now for my y-axis, which is going to be distance, my low number is 0, my high number is 220. So can I count by tens here? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Well, I'm only at 100 there, so no, I have to get up 220. So I could count by 20s or by 25s. Just pick a number that's kind of easy to count by and make sure it fits. 
So I'm going to count by, let me see, if I count by 20s, it'll work. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60, 80. Yeah, so I can count by 20s. You could pick 25 if you want to as well, but I'm going to count by 20s here. And again, I'm not going to crowd them in, so I'm not going to label every grid line. I'm going to label every second grid line, but I am counting by 20s. Okay, so there's my X and Y values, and it's really hard to write sideways on a tablet. That says distance, kilometers. That's my, my Y dependent variable, right? The distance depends on the time. So time's down here on the X axis because it's independent, and distance is dependent on time. So we're still on B, graph the data. We've selected a good scale. You're going to lose form marks if you don't choose a good scale. And for example, what sometimes happens is you don't space it out and you end up trying to put this number on and it's way off your grid. You're putting a, trying to put a dot way up here. So make sure it all fits. Um, we still have to put the points on. That's not so bad. So I'm going to put those on in red and we'll see how that looks. All right, so I've got my dots in there and they look good. They line up, which means I didn't make a mistake. And now I'm going to connect the dots. When I do connect the dots with my ruler, I don't go, I, so I'm going to extend my line up here because he could continue driving, but we're not going to extend the line down here because zero is the end, right, of time. He started driving at time zero. So we, we don't draw anything below that because he was never driving before time zero. So we start here, this is a firm dot, and we draw, graph our line, but we go a little further and put an arrow there. Okay, I just spent several minutes trying to get that line and I could not get it to work. So, uh, of course, it should hit through this dot here and they should all line up, but I gave up. Um, if I were teaching this in front of the board, of course, I would have my meter stick and I would, it would all line up perfectly, but just with the tablet, technology is the way it is. Yours should be going through zero, zero and should be going through these points. So that's the data. Um, now we could, I didn't leave myself enough room here, but I could uh, put a title in here. Uh, I've labeled the axes, which is really important, but the title would be, you know, trip to Kingston or something like that. You could write in there. Part C, interpolate. There's a new word. How long would it take him to travel 75 kilometers? Interpolate. It's got the word in there, right? In. That means inside this line inside this data I can find the answer within the data to travel 75 kilometers okay I don't have 75 kilometers here I have 55 and I have 100 but it's in here if I look at my graph 75 kilometers would be right about maybe there so how long would it take him to travel 75 kilometers I'm going to use my graph I'm going to go up to the um, about where 75 is which is maybe about here I'm going to go across, I'm going to hit my graph, and then, now my line's a little off, of course, then you're going to come down, and mine is about there, so it looks like it's coming onto about 40 years. will probably be different because your line's better than my line. So how long would it take him to travel um, 75 kilometers? It looks like it would take him about 40 minutes. It looks like it would take about 40 minutes, according to my graph. That's how you interpolate. You look within the data that you were given to find the answer, and you're not given that exact value. We're not given 45, so we have to look, um, uh, sorry, we're not given 75, so we have to look within the data, within the line to find the answer. That's interpolating. Just make sure you're not going to 75 here, because this is time. That's a common mistake. Some, you'll see this number and you'll look along the wrong axis. So how long would it take him to travel 75 kilometers? That's a distance. Got a kilometer right there, kilometer right there. I have to use this, this side here. I go up to 75 and across and down. Now extrapolate. Extrapolate's got the word extra in it, which means what we're looking for is extra. It's outside of my data. How many kilometers would he travel in three hours? Okay, so I only go up to, so 60 minutes, there's one hour, there's two hours, uh, another 60 minutes would be 180 minutes, so we're looking for three hours is three times 60, that's 180 minutes, 180, oops, 180 minutes, and I don't have 180, 
on my graph, and I certainly don't have it in my table. If you look at your table, I've got a stop at 120 minutes. So this is extra, extra. This is outside of the information. It's not in, it's extra. So I have to go outside of my graph to guess where 180 would be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my graph a little bit. So if I could use my ruler nicely, if it was a friend to me, I would use a ruler for this, but this is freehand right here. So where would 180 be? 180 would be, look along the bottom now, uh, 180 would be about here, I think. So I'm guessing, I'm extrapolating. So I go all the way up to my line that I just drew here. So I go all the way up, try to keep it straight. You would be using a ruler, of course, to line it up. I go all the way up. Where do I hit? About here. So now I look across. I look across to my y-axis and I'm trying to see where that would hit. So what's this? So 280, this would be, I was counting by 20s, remember? So this would be 300, so maybe about, I don't know, maybe say 310 or something like that. It's, I think it's more than that. I think it's more like 330, but my graph's not very good because my lines aren't very good. So when I extrapolate according to my graph, how many kilometers would he travel in three hours? And I should always be putting a sentence here. Therefore, he would travel. Therefore, he would travel about 310 kilometers in three hours. So for this one, because the question was giving us a time, 180 minutes, I didn't look for 180 here. That's distance. I looked for 180 here on time. So make sure you're always, when you're interpolating and extrapolating, you're starting off on the right, on the right axis. So that's a, uh, a good recap of a lot of stuff that we've done so far and a lot of vocabulary you need to know and you need to know how to spell these words properly, please.